welcome. If you're new here, hey, YouTube is up as well. Um, if you're new here, my name is Cassandra Bellevue. Welcome to Talk About It Tuesday. Um, we're here every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And um, I just love to come here every Tuesday morning and bring you guys an encouraging word. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit is so passionate about us succeeding and winning and having a relationship with him and being free from the traps and the snares of the enemy. And so that's why I'm encouraged about, I'm excited about this word, because if you've been following this page for any amount of time, or you know me personally, I'm so passionate about healing and um, deliverance, because I want people to not get sucked into the trap of the enemy all the time. And today we're talking about triggers, triggers. It's so funny because um, last week, the Holy Spirit was talking to me about triggers and how sometimes that this is one of the tactics that the enemy uses. Hey, good morning, Grace. Good morning, Eugene. See you guys over on Instagram. We're talking about triggers today. You know, the enemy is going to use whatever he can in order to get us going around the base of the mountain. That's how I say it. He wants us to be going around the base of the mountain. He doesn't want us to progress in life. He doesn't, he doesn't want us to have any victories. He just wants us to just maintain doing nothing. And God wants us to completely finish our race. And, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people lately. I've had a lot of like SOS calls from like former clients, people that I, I, I'm mentoring and just friends um, recently who are just like, oh my gosh, this is what's going on with me. Like what's happening? What, what what's, what's going on with me? What's happening? And I'm going to put it at you this way. There are so many of you who are so close to the finish line. You have assignments from the Lord. You're waiting on things and you're like, where is it? And you're so close to the finish line. Like the enemy is like pulling out all the stops. So you're getting triggered into like old cycles. You're, you're having all these different different things happening. You're like, what in the world is going on? And one of the things that the Holy Spirit reminded me was that scripture that talks about the enemy and how in the end times he's going to wow out because his time is short. Um, he's just going to just be, it's just going to be absolute um, pan, pan, pandemonium and mayhem and all these different things um, because he knows his time is short. I want to go look it up really quick. That's the scripture is um, Revelation 12, 12. And it says, a part of it says, um, for the devil has come down unto you. He knows that his time is short. And, you know, some of you right now, the time short part is like, you're so close to like, a major breakthrough in your destiny and your, your process. Um, and he just doesn't want you to get there. You know, I've shared this before that, you know, one of the, the reasons why I'm so passionate about you know, cheering people on and, and, and rooting for people in their, in their purpose and their call and their destiny is because unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look on it, I look at it. I have been walking with people in my life in the past who were so close to the finish line and they gave up on themselves. They gave up on God's promises. And I can't even explain to you how devastating that is to watch when it's somebody close to you, when it's somebody you love and you see them right there at the finish line. Like literally you got five more steps, you know, and they're like, I'm tired, I'm done. And they either just fall to the ground or they turn around and go the other direction or just remove themselves from, from the field. And so we're going to be talking about triggers today. Um, I have a couple of housekeeping things, but I'm going to save one. I'm going to do one now and save one for the end. And I just want to remind you guys that we're in the middle of a giveaway. So um, right now we are giving away a bundle. And this bundle is pretty much um, Press But Not Crush, the book. Press But Not Crush, the 30-day um, devotional. And either like one of our, our hats or visors from the, the store or one of our t-shirts. Um, we have unisex t-shirts, we have women's v-neck t-shirts. Um, so we're giving away the bundles, a bundle of three things. Um, all you have to do is by the end of this month, get out there to CassandraBellevue.com. Once you get there, you're gonna have to see a pop-up that says sign up for our newsletter. Put your email address in there. And at the end of the month, I'm gonna draw a name and it's one lucky winner is gonna get all three items. So don't forget to do that. That is absolutely free. That is a 
at no cost to you. Um, you just got to put in your email address and then you might be getting this bundle shipped over to you. So I wanted to remind you guys of that. Before we go any further, I'm going to open this up in prayer and we're going to get into this message that the Holy Spirit has been putting on my heart. So Father God, um, we just um, thank you for another day. We thank you that your mercies are new every day. We thank you that it doesn't even matter what we did yesterday. If we failed miserably, if we made lots of mistakes, if we didn't hit all of our goals, your mercies are new every single day. You hit the reset button. And Lord, we just thank you for a second chance. Every day we get a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh chance. And we thank you that you never, ever give up on us. Help us, Father, to never, ever give up on ourselves as well. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come sit with me, sit with the folks that are under the sound of my voice. And I just ask that as I am relaying this message that you gave me, that you would speak to them in the specific areas of their lives that need your healing touch. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. So again, today we're talking about triggers. And, you know, he was just talking to me about how, you know, all these SOS calls that I've been getting lately, like all of them, like every person pretty much said the same thing. Like, I've dealt with this before, or why is this coming up again? Or, you know, why did this situation trigger me back into my emotions? You know, I, I did a video a while ago about our emotions. Hey, our emotions are a beautiful thing. God gave us our emotions. We don't have to be apologetic about our emotions. Like, I don't feel like we have to stuff and squash our emotions at all. But the thing is, emotions are just tools. They're just indicators. We're not supposed to be run by them. They're not supposed to be running the show, okay? so. There's times where something will trigger you and you'll get angry or something will trigger you and you, and you will get like depressed or you'll get sad or you'll feel fear or whatever. And we're going to talk about how um, the way you steward those moments is going to determine whether these triggers that the enemy may be sending your way are going to sabotage you or if they're actually going to help you to move forward. You know, the, the song that has been in my spirit for like the past week, um, man, I wish I would have looked it up and figured out what it was called and all that, but it's a song and it says, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory for the battle belongs to the Lord. And it's like, I felt like Holy Spirit was like, remind them that the battle belongs to me. And if they stick with me and navigate through this terrain with me, they're going to be victorious because I am fighting for them and with them. And so some of you are so close to the finish line. Some of you are so close to the breakthrough. And it's like the enemy just wants to trigger you into different things because you're so close. So I want you to be um, attentive to that. I want you to be aware of that. When you feel different things are triggering you into emotions, just be aware of that. You know, and I also want to say this too. Um, you know, in dealing with people or dealing with situations, um, sometimes the trigger is about us to teach us something, and we're going to focus more on that. And sometimes the trigger is about the other person. Um, you know, last year I had a situation where I got like majorly triggered. Hey, Natasha. Um, I had a situation where I got majorly triggered last year and I was dealing with somebody and they were making a lot of promises and they were saying like, uh, they're making a bunch of commitments. Like, here's a list of things that are going to go down. This is what I'm going to give you. This is what I'm going to do for you. Blah, 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 blah. And it was great. And half of the list of things were things that I had requested. And the other half was like, oh, these are things. I'm going to throw in and I'm going to do for you. And I'm just like, okay, great. You know, this is going to be a great partnership, you know, what have you. And as time progressed, like this person really didn't live up to hardly any of the stuff that they said they were going to do. And the things that actually did get done was because I had to stay on top of them and like pretty much project manage them. Now, I'm a project manager by trade. I've been working in IT telecommunications since 1999. You know, that's what I do by day. And I, I'm good at it. I, 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 for the most part, enjoy what I do. But there are times where, like, in my personal life, I don't really feel like I want to... to project manage people. <laughs> I don't, I definitely don't want to micromanage people. Definitely not a grown adult. And so what started to happen was this situation started to trigger me because of um, a situation that I had dealt with in the past. It was like a long, arduous 
you know, drama filled situation. And it was a situation where I would, I had to deal with disappointment after disappointment of this person promising they were going to do stuff or, or saying they're committing to do things that they didn't show up. And I think what, what triggered me the most too, was like this person never, ever even felt like remorseful. They didn't even really care that they were not a person of their word because I was actually like confronting them about it. Like, hey, what's going on with this? You said you're gonna do it. And that was like a long situation that I dealt with for, for years. And so that's why for me, integrity is huge. For me, I'm always quoting, let your SBS let you know, we know like, you know, it's important as people of God that when we say we're gonna do something that we do it. And it is a big deal. I don't care who is telling you like, oh, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. The word of God even tells us, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Things happen sometimes. Sometimes we have to, to um, you know, shirk back on something we committed to do, but that's an opportunity for us to step up as people of God, people of integrity, and apologize. Hey, acknowledge the fact that you didn't do what you said you were going to do and make amends. You know, that is what we're called to do. And so I was in the situation um, last year where I had to deal with this person. Oh my gosh, y'all. And it was triggering me to a place of anger that I have not been to in, I, I don't even know how long. It has been years since I've been to this place. And I even remember thinking when I was dealing with the situation, I was like, I cannot remember the last time I was this mad. <laughs> like I was raging mad. But what the Holy Spirit started to, to um, speak to me in that situation is he was like, hey, this person is in the wrong, point blank period. You know, I'm not trying to make excuses excuses for what this person did but he was like however daughter it also should not be triggering you to this point of anger and as it began to unpack it he began to get de go deeper with me he was just like if you really dig deeper into this whole triggering situation you'll realize that you're not trusting me to step in as well and to help you with it I mean, Holy Spirit just started to peel back the layers of the situation. And I realized this wasn't just a matter of, oh, somebody didn't do what they said they were going to do. This was an area of wounding that I had that hadn't been dealt with um, completely, if you will, because I, I do a lot of inner healing and deliverance work, but there was still something there that I had to deal with. And again, the Holy Spirit was showing me like, if you really dig even deeper he was like, you don't trust me to fight for you and you don't trust me to provide for your needs. Yo, I was like really, really, really mind blown. And so it really took the focus away from this person um, for a second and who they were and their lack of integrity. And it forced me to focus on myself and my heart and who do I believe God is? And is he going to protect me? Is he going to come through for me? Is he going to provide for me? Is he going to take care of the desires of my heart? And it was such a, a healing experience. When I went through it, I had to like repent of, you know, these areas where I was just like, wow, God, like it really is exposing that. Like, I don't trust that you'll fight for me. And I don't trust that you'll, you'll make sure that I get the things that I need. So I had to to repent of not believing that he was going to provide for me and take care of me. Um, I had to repent of not believing that God was going to give me justice in this situation. Like this whole situation went from just being irritated and, and angry at somebody to like showing me like this is actually an area of your heart that needs to be healed or it's going to sabotage not only our relationship, but it's going to sabotage like other relationships in the future. Because if you don't deal with that trigger and that anger, any other time somebody doesn't... Um, they don't do what they say they're going to do. You're just going to be automatically be triggered into anger. And you might really harm some of these relationships, these divine connections that God wants to give you, you know, in the future. And so, oh, thank you, Eugene. Yeah, that song is called Sea of Victory by um, Elevation Worship. Thank you so much, Eugene. But I felt like the Holy Spirit was singing that over all, like all of us. Like we're going to see a victory because the battle belongs to the Lord. And sometimes, you know, a lot of us feel like um, 
were abandoned or were alone. Um, and that's a lie from the enemy as well. God is with us. He's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us. And no matter what the situation is, we have to believe that he is who he says he is and that he's going to do what he's going to, what he said he's going to do. Like one of the things he reminded me too, is he reminded me of, um, the Israelites, they literally got right up to the promised land, you guys, okay? Remember, we're talking about crossing over to the finish line, getting over into breakthrough. They got right up to the promised land, and fear triggered them to turn back around. And what did they do? They wound up running around the base of the mountain for 40 years, you guys. We do not want to repeat that. You know, one of the beautiful things about the word of God and the stories of the people in his word is that um, we can learn from their mistakes. Like, let's be people who can learn from other mistakes. You know, I say that to my kid all the time. I'm like, son, I want you to be somebody who can learn from other people's mistakes. I want you to be somebody who, you know, I can warn you or tell you a story and you'd be like, oh no, that's not going to be me. I don't need to go down that road. Like, I want you to be that person in life. And that's what we can gain from these stories from the word of God. These Israelites literally could have crossed over, but they, they got caught up and the enemy triggered them with fear because of how big the giants were. The enemy um, triggered them. I, literally, they triggered them into fear to the point where they started complaining, murmuring, complaining. We know that that's a sin too. They started coming against God's character. Why did you bring us out here to die? Like all these different things. So like, again, that's why I said like our emotions, they're indicators of things, but we can't be, you know, run by our emotions. We can't let our emotions lead us or it's going to sabotage the things that God has for us. So in this season that we're in, let's be mindful of trigger. Pay attention to the things that trigger you to get mad. Pay attention to the things that trigger you into hopelessness. Pay attention to the things that trigger you into feeling depression. Pay attention to the things that just trigger you into frustration. Pay attention and go deeper. Invite the Holy Spirit into the situation and ask him, why did that just make me feel that way? If we would stop and do that, we would get so much inner healing. Like I, like I said, I'm a big, big, big advocate for inner healing and deliverance. But guess what? You don't even have to go to a ministry all the time to have that done. I personally go and get deliverance every single year um, because I just really feel like as we go through life, different things trigger us. Sometimes we open the door to like different spirits and emotions and all these things. And we just, again, it's just like, to me, it's like clean up shop. It's like, it's like every year when people do like a, a deep spring cleaning of their houses, you know, I appreciate inner healing and deliverance because throughout the year, you know, you might pick up bitterness or you might pick up, you know, whatever anger, you know, whatever from different situations that you don't want that stuff sitting there and festering, you know, um, just now, as I was saying that, you know, the Holy Spirit showed me this picture and this has happened in my house a few times, unfortunately, but he showed me this picture because I have like this little fruit um, basket that sits up on the counter. And the other day I had to throw away the entire basket. At that point, it just had a whole bunch of apples in it because one of the apples has started to rot and it was sitting next to, you know, the effect It's sitting next to another apple would just sit next to them. And before you know it, like all these different apples start to show signs of decay. And so I had to just up chuck that whole entire basket and throw it away. And that's what it is with these with these triggers and these things. It's an indicator of something that is there that needs to be healed. And all you have to do is say, Holy Spirit, why do I feel this way? Like what's going on in here? You know, like I said earlier, these um Triggers are an indicator and they're showing you what's going on in your own heart and in your own spirit. But also, you know, there are times where the trigger is actually showing you what's going on with another person. Like the Lord is, it's kind of a, a discernment type of thing where it's showing you like this person isn't trustworthy. You've been through this situation before. Pay attention, you know, to what this person, hey, Rosalyn, I see you. Good morning. Um, pay attention to what this person is tr is triggering you to because it may be showing you this person has a lack of integrity or you know this person you know has their own anger issues or whatever it's just an opportunity to take a step back 
and to uh, look at the whole situation and invite the Holy Spirit in and ask him, like, what's going on here? Why am I feeling this way? Are you telling me something more about myself? Are you telling me something more about this person? Um, you know, one thing I want to say, too, is in order to, to continue on this track of freedom and continue on this path um, that God has for us, like we have to cling to forgiveness. You know, one of my favorite quotes, and I really don't know who who said it, um, but it's a quote that talks about how forgiveness, um, unforgiveness is the poison we drink thinking that it affects the other person. If there is anybody in your life... <laughs> that you've got beef with, that you you have had issues with or whatever, and like seeing their face, seeing their name, every time you bump into them, it triggers you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Like when you see them, it's like you feel that, ugh, like we we don't we don't need to we don't need to stay in that place. We need to forgive. Um, there's a ton of scriptures about forgiveness. I mean, you know, I think that sometimes like one of the biggest slaps in the face that we can give Jesus sometimes is not forgiving other people for the things that they did against us. I mean, look what he did for us. While we were still yet sinners, Christ died for us. Y'all remember that scripture? I'm looking it up right now. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us before we even asked for forgiveness. Think about that. He, he died for us before we even asked for the forgiveness. He did it beforehand. And so that's Romans um, 5 verses 8 for my, my note takers. But while we were still sinners, he died for us. He's really big on this forgiveness thing. He paid a very, very, very high price for this forgiveness thing. But do you think that, that that's only for you to benefit from? You know, he wants us to forgive. He wants us to let people go, set people free from the things that they have done to us. And guess what? You don't even have to have a powwow or a one-on-one -on -one session with anybody to forgive them. You know, you can just do that in the in the confines of your home, in the, in the, the personal space, in your bedroom, in your prayer closet, whatever it is, and release people. You know, another thing that I want to say, too. Oh, boy, sir, but talk with me about this. We need to be very careful about trying to take vengeance into our own hands, you know? So when you think about those situations and you think about those people who have done you wrong, like, don't take the bait of Satan and, and try to get revenge for yourself, okay? Romans 12 verse 17 says, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Again, this is a situation where you kind of feel like, oh, I got to take vengeance into my own hands. It's because if you really think about it, you don't believe that God is going to give you justice or God is going to defend you. Like I said earlier, you a lot of these trigger things that you might be dealing with, if there's something deeper going on there. It's not just that this person gets on your nerves. And that's not, it's not just that this person has no integrity. It's not like this person, whatever you think about, whatever the whoever the person is that has triggered you in whatever your situation. In a lot of cases, it may not even be about them. And in some cases, it's about both of you. It's about that person and it's about you. But, you know, make sure you stay in a place of forgiveness. I know it's easier said than done, especially in situations where the same person keeps wronging you over and over and over and over again. The tendency is for that anger and that frustration to like build and the enemy wants to bait you into taking action. But you know what? I, I just you know, encourage you to take those situations and take them to the feet of Jesus. You know, for me personally, I just gotten to the point, like when, when crazy stuff goes down and I see it and, you know, I have this joke with my friends, like, you know, I was, I was uh, raised in Philly and <laughs> when I first moved, you know, out down here into the South, you know, a lot of people were just like, wow, this girl is like rough around the edges. It's like, I'm a Yankee. I'm from Philly. And so, you know, in my immaturity, in my early days, you know, being a believer, like I was, it took nothing for me to clap back at somebody like my mouth, like for the most part, 
um, in my life has got me into a whole lot of trouble because I'm just quick with it and my words are sharp. And, you know, I always joke now <laughs> because like the Lord has done such a work in me now where I don't react to stuff like I used to. The stuff that used to come out of my mouth doesn't come out of my mouth anymore. I might still think it, but it doesn't come out of my mouth. But, you know, I used to make this joke about like, don't let Philly cats come out. Like, don't let Philly cats come out because y'all don't want to meet her. Um, and so a lot of times I, for me, I recognize the situations where the enemy is trying to trigger Philly cats, Philly cats to come out. And let you know about this situation. And I don't want to be that person. You know, um, it's reminded me of that scripture in Philippians, I think it is, that talks about let your gentleness be um, um, let your gentleness be made known to all. Uh, I want to find that scripture. I think it's like Philippians um, 4. Let your gentleness be evident to all. I remember the first time the Holy Spirit um, hit me with this scripture and he would be like, let my gentleness, I was like, gentleness, me? <laughs> like, I used to always joke around about that Holy Spirit. I'm like, why are you always showing me the scripture? Like, I don't have any gentleness. Like, that's what I really believed back in the day. But, you know, that's a fruit of the spirit, you know? And that's actually Philippians 4 verses 5, you know? Let everyone see that you're considerate in all you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Let your gentleness be apparent to all, you know, all these different versions. But, you know, a lot of times the the, the Holy Spirit, I mean, the enemy is trying to trigger you into these places of you losing your testimony or ruining your own reputation or self-sabotaging relationships that he's trying to put in your life. And so sometimes triggers will come out and he's trying to, you know, pretty much get you to quit and get you to ruin what God's trying to bring to you. And we just want to be very, very, very mindful of those type of things. Don't take the bait of Satan. OK, victory is so close. Victory is so close. Your victory is so close. Do not let the enemy bait you into fear, into anger, into all these things and then cause you to have to go do another lap around the mountain. You know, I have a friend in my life who talks about this. Every, she talks about this often and every time she says it like my heart is just like oh and she talks about this area of her life that she knows that she is the reason why she got delayed there's something that she's waiting for right now that God promised her and she knows that she's the reason that she got delayed and I'm like, every time she talks about that, I'm like, wow, that's so deep, you know, to like be aware, like I'm the reason why I'm still waiting right now, you know, because whether you didn't handle a situation properly or you weren't obedient to do something that God has asked you to do, like a lot of these triggers is the enemy is trying to prevent you from stepping into the fullness, stepping into the things that God has for you. So I just want us to be aware. I just want us to, to not be taken off guard. There's so many people right now who are in the thick of like a faith walk, believing God for the impossible, waiting for the miracles. And it's so easy while you're dealing with hope deferred or whatever it is to get sucked into, triggered into your emotions that are going to drive you to do things that you shouldn't do. You know, I love the fact that the, the, the word of God tells us to, to be angry, but do not sin. I love that. He's reminding us that that these emotions that he's given us, he has given them to us. They're an asset to us. They're a blessing to us. But how we use them, they could be to our detriment or to our benefit. And so that's why the word of God says, so when, when somebody triggers you into anger, you know, you don't have to be feeling all bad. Like, oh man, I'm so mad. I got ticked off. You know, I'm so disappointed that I got ticked off at this person. You don't have to like go to that extent, but what are you going to do with that anger? Are you going to let it trigger you into going off on somebody, starting some type of altercation, ruining your testimony over some nonsense in the moment? Okay, you might feel satisfied for all but what, five seconds? And then you got to deal with the aftermath of what you did? Or are you going to take that anger and like let it drive you into intercessory prayer or something or let it drive you into some declaration? I know for me, when I get triggered or, or sometimes when like those emotions get strong, you know, I start opening my mouth and I start doing what the enemy doesn't really expect me to do in that moment. And that is to bless my life, declare and decree over myself, you know, remind myself of the scriptures. This is what God said. He is not a man that he should lie. His word is true. This is my portion. This is my purpose. 
purpose. This is what he has for me. And I stay in that place. Like it doesn't matter these smoke screens and mirrors that you're throwing up right at me right now to try to get me to give up on myself and my purpose like he did with the Israelites again as they were getting ready to enter into the promised land they got triggered into fear and they walked away and may I remind you that the punishment that God gave that generation was that they were just going to die in the wilderness sometimes you get a second chance and sometimes it's a wrap it's over for you. And so I don't want that to be the case for any of y'all. You know, it's not going to be a wrap. I declare and decree it. You're going to catch yourself. The Holy Spirit is going to be able to, to remind you that he's there with you. And, you know, again, take that opportunity to invite Holy like, Y'all, that is like the ultimate hack of this Christian walk. Invite your Holy Spirit into these situations. When you're ticked off, when you're mad, when you're feeling depressed, all invite the whole, ask him, Holy Spirit, where are you? My favorite thing is like when I get hit by a blow of the enemy or something crazy happens, I just like, I do my best to like have the woosa moment, sit down. And then when I can bring myself to, I ask, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say about this situation? What are you trying to teach? If there's something you're trying to teach me, what is it? If there's something I need to repent of, what is it? Like, what do I need to do in this situation? Sometimes he'll, he'll tell you, just chill out. Let me handle this. You know, he's done that to me many, many times. He's like, I just want you to, you know, shut it. And let me handle the situation. Just shut it and let me handle it. You know, um, a more, a more finesse way of saying it is like the scriptures in Psalm where um, it talks about uh, quieting your soul, right? Um, you want to quiet your soul and you want to invite the Holy Spirit um, into that situation and be like, what do you have to say about this? You know, may my soul be quiet before God. You know, this is Psalm 62 verse five. My, let my soul be quiet before God. For from him comes my hope. That's the ultimate hack where you just like flip the situation. So, okay, enough about that. I want us to get into an activation because like I said, the most important part about this, the most important part about what we're doing here is for you to connect with the Holy Spirit. So that's enough of me talking. We're going to put on some soaking music. And if you're somebody who feels like you've been triggered here lately, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, he wants to highlight something for you. He wants to show you something. And so therefore I want to give us the opportunity to tap into him, do exactly what I just said, invite him into the situation and ask him like, what's going on here? You know, what do I need to be aware of? What actions do I need to take? Like, what do you want me to do in these situations? Because I want to handle these in a way that these situations in a way that is pleasing to you. So I'm going to pray for us and then we're going to go into an activation. We're just going to ask a couple questions. Holy Spirit, thank you so much just for your love for us. Thank you that <laughs> thank you that you are always that phone a friend option. Always. Always. You are always the phone a friend option in any situation that we're in. Anytime we feel like we're in over our heads, anytime we feel like our emotions are going to get the best of us, you are always there. We can tap into you at any point in any space, at any time. You are there. You are our comforter. You are our helper. And no matter what the situation is, you have a solution. You already have the strategy. We just need to tap into you for it. So Holy Spirit, you've already been showing me that many, many of your people are in intense situations of late and that the enemy is triggering people for different purposes. Some of them to ruin their reputation. Some of them to pretty much sabotage an opportunity. Some of them to just quit on whatever it is their assignment is for them to walk away. I declare and decree that none of that 
is going to happen. I declare and decree over every single person under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening, watching live, or they're catching the replay, that they will not get suckered into any of the traps of the enemy. They will not take the bait of Satan, but that they will stop, they will quiet their souls, and they will say, Holy Spirit, what do you have to say about the situation? What do I need to learn from it? And what do I need to do moving forward? Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that you are our biggest cheerleader. You're always rooting for us and you're truly for us. So Holy Spirit, as we do this activation right now, I just invite you to speak to your children. They are your sheep. They hear your voice. So we just bind that lie right now that they can't hear you concerning this activation. So I just want us to just come before the Holy Spirit. And there's, if there's something that you've been dealing with or a trigger you've been dealing with, I invite you to ask the Holy Spirit, what does he have to say about it? Is there an area in your heart that needs to some attention, needs some tending to? Ask him, what do you say about this situation? What do I need to learn from this situation? For some of you, your triggers are showing you that you have an area of trust that you have to work on with the Lord. He's showing you that that, that trust between the two of you just needs to be strengthened. And for some of you, he's highlighting a spirit of sabotage. Whether it's the enemy trying to sabotage you or a self-sabotaging spirit, he's, he's, he, he's here. I'm hearing that word sabotage. And then I want you to ask him, no matter what he said, write it down and then ask him, like, how do you want me to proceed? Where do I go from here? What do you want me to do, if anything? For some of you, this is just a Exodus 14, 14 invitation. <laughs> it says, the Lord himself will fight for you, just stay calm. For some of you, that's the, that's the strategy. He just wants you to kick back, relax, believe him at his word, believe that he loves you, he's for you, he's a good father, he's going to take care of you. He just wants you to chill out. He wants to prove himself yet again that he's a good father. Keep calm. You just chill out. You know, it's reminding me of, uh, I haven't seen one of these recently, but there was those little memes that would go around um, for, for years, and it was like something different in each one, but it had like a little crown, and it was just like, just keep calm, whatever the saying is that they would add to it. Um, so today, imagine that crown, and it says, keep calm, the Lord is fighting for you. For some of you, like, that's what... You need to cling to. Keep calm. The Lord is fighting for you. For some of you, he's showing you forgiveness. You you need to forgive some people and let them go. Release them, which is ultimately releasing yourself. But whatever it is that he's speaking to you, do it by faith, believing that it's going to promote you and move you to the next level, draw you closer to him, give you the victory. Remember, that's what he was he was speaking. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. And some of you just really, really, really need to believe like he is fighting for me. Take those triggers, put them on the altar, and be like, here you go, Jesus. Here you go, Holy Spirit. If there's something you need me to do, then just let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to be over here, <laughs> you know, keeping calm, quieting my soul and allowing you to
to bring me the victory because we refuse to do what the Israelites did and allow fear to trigger them right out of their promise. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. This is the year to get it all. This is the year to, to put our hands on these promises and to truly, truly experience these things that we have been waiting on for so long. Don't get punked at the finish line, you guys. Don't do it. Don't do it. Like I said, it might feel good for five seconds while you go off, take revenge, say what you need to say, try to do it. But in the long run, it's going to be to your detriment. Just don't take the biggest thing. Just don't do it. All right. So I think that's it. Don't get triggered into doing another lap around the base of the mountain. Invite him into those triggering moments and let him reveal to you what he wants to show you. Let him reveal to you what the enemy doesn't want you to see. And that in and of itself is victory in Jesus' mighty name. All right, guys. So that's it. Um, I shared quickly in the beginning um, the the um, giveaway we're doing right now. Get both books, the, the, the main book, the devotional. You know, a lot of people ask me a lot of times, like, what is the book about? You know, who is this book for? This book is for anybody who is at the end of their rope, feel like they want to just throw on the towel. This is a book for anybody who needs to learn more about perseverance. This is a book for anybody who wants to deep, dig deeper into the armor of God. This is a book for anybody who just loves to hear people's testimonies of how God brought them out of crazy situations. Because I share so many personal testimonies in this book. We have a bundle, the book, the 30-day devotional, and you can either get a t-shirt or a hat from the store. Um, go to CassandraBellevue.com, put your name um, in the, the drawing. All you got to do is um, sign up for the newsletter and um, you put your name in the drawing. Last day of the month, I'm going to pull a name and mail you out this three item bundle. The other thing that's going on right now, which is really, really encouraging y'all, I am now taking five new one-on-one -on -one life coaching clients. I am a certified life coach. My niche is to champion people in their destiny, calling, and purpose. Some of you are so overwhelmed right now. You know what you're supposed to be doing, but it's like you don't even know where to begin. You don't even know where to start. And so what's happening? You're stuck. You're stuck. You're not moving forward. You're frozen in place. And you just need somebody to come alongside of you and help champion you. I'm here for you. If you're somebody who's also like, what is my purpose calling in destiny? Like, what am I supposed to be doing? I promise you, sweetheart, that God put you here for a purpose. You are not just floating around here arbitrarily. Like, he has a purpose for you. Let me help you to discover what that is. It's already in you. It's already in you. And so we're just going to, like, you know, dust it off so that you can see it for yourself. But this summer, I'm accepting five one-on-one -on -one clients. If you want to know if this is a good fit for you or you just have any questions at all about life coaching, I encourage you to just send me a DM on whatever platform you're watching it on or if you're on YouTube, put a, com a comment. Um, send me a message and say, hey, can I get 15 minutes of your time? We do 50, a free 15-minute approach the coach session where you can come and ask your questions and see if it's a good, if it's a good fit. So I've got five slots this summer for... Um, one on one clients, you can pick the day and time, whether it's every Monday night um, for 12 weeks or what have you. If we've got to skip weeks because the summer people are traveling, that's totally understandable. We can do that. Um, the other thing is August the 7th, don't forget it. That's a Sunday, 3 p.m. We are kicking off the next group coaching um, session. Some people are like, hey, I want to do this with a troop of people, with um, a bunch of friends, a bunch of like-minded people going after their purpose, calling destiny. That one's only six weeks. It starts August the 7th. Um, and so all the details are out there as well. Go to CassandraBelly.com, go to the store, and you'll see both options. Again, if you have any questions, just send me a message and we can answer any questions that you have. So we're going to pop on over to Clubhouse at this point and and, you know, if anybody wants to talk or share what the Holy Spirit talked to you about during the activation time, then that would be a great time to do that. Thank you guys for joining today. Y'all know I love seeing y'all comments and y'all support. Um, I did my best to wave at everybody who 
came in on Instagram, YouTube, you know, I love you guys. Clubhouse, I'll be over there in a second. Father God, I just bless this group. I bless your children. I bless your people. I thank you that we are more than conquerors. You have a purpose and a plan for our lives. We declare and decree that we are not going to be a part of hindering ourselves. We are not going to self-sabotage. We are going to stick with you and we're going to allow you to mold us. You are the potter. We are the clay. And we're going to allow you to finish this good work that you began in us. Thank you for never giving up on us, even when we give up on ourselves. So, Father, propel us into to being motivated. Help us to get back up and to keep on moving forward because the finish line is near. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Okay, guys, that's it. YouTube. Thanks for joining. Love you guys. See you. Actually, I will see you guys on Friday because Friday is July the 1st and the first of every month. Um, I also come out here and do a prophetic um, corporate word for the month. So if you want to join us for that, you can do it. All right now, I don't know what time. I'll try to um, post something about that. But stay tuned. See you guys on Friday for the word of the Lord for the month of July. Bye, YouTube. All right, IG.